It has been a full century since the Communist Party seized power in the Soviet Union. According to records compiled by the U.S. Congress, communist regimes were responsible for the deaths of at least 100 million people. The Black Book of Communism details this history of murder. From documents declassified by the governments of nations in the former Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, as well as official records on the victims of communist political campaigns in China and North Korea, the public has gained a good picture of the Communist Party's addiction to killing. Communist totalitarianism is often compared to that of the Nazis. While there are many parallels to be found, there is one crucial distinction that is often overlooked. The Nazis aimed to eliminate the Jewish people, but the goal of communism goes beyond physical slaughter. People of faith do not consider physical demise to be one's true death, since the soul goes to heaven or is born again in the cycle of reincarnation. The Communist Party uses killing as an instrument to plant the seeds of terror in the minds of the people, forcing them to accept its evil ideology. Through the destruction of morality, people's souls are fated to damnation. The Communist Party aims to destroy not just man's physical body, but also his soul. An additional characteristic of the Communist Party is the intensity with which it carries out internal purges and selects the cruelest of leaders. It is difficult for many to understand the rationale behind the barbarity inflicted by the Communist Party upon its own ranks, including those who became victims simply for deviating from the party on specific issues while otherwise being wholly loyal to the party and its leadership. One reason is that the Communist Party in its rebellion against gods and humankind, possesses an instinctual fear that its doom is always around the corner. To reinforce itself, the party needs to recruit individuals with no regard for moral right and wrong. These individuals are distinguished in the process of mass killing, and their elevation to positions of leadership enables the specter of communism to ensure the perpetuation of its earthly tyranny. In 1989, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, cadres who refused to participate in the June 4th Tiananmen Square massacre were purged. Jiang Zemin, who demonstrated his cruelty during the events, was promoted to become leader of the CCP. After Jiang began the persecution of Falun Gong in 1999, he promoted officials such as Luo Gan and Zhou Yongkang to high positions as they had demonstrated their ability to commit the most brutal crimes in the persecution. Another motive for killing is to recruit participants from general society, as was done during the Cultural Revolution. By committing murder and other crimes, the masses implicated themselves as accomplices to the CCP's savagery, and the most brutal perpetrators became the staunchest followers of the party. Even today, many former Red Guards who committed assault and murder during the Cultural Revolution, expressed no remorse for their crimes, saying they have no regrets about the events of their youth. Furthermore, by killing its victims openly and deliberately, the Communist Party intimidates the general population into obedience. All this allows us to expound on a general principle. Throughout history, killing has occurred under tyrannical governments or during times of war because there was an enemy to be defeated. It is the characteristic of the Communist Party that it must have an enemy, and if there are no enemies, it must invent them so that it can continue to kill. In a country like China, with its long history and rich culture, the Communist Party could not achieve its aims without continuous killing. Traditionally, the Chinese people believed in and revered the divine. Steeped in a cultural heritage of 5,000 years, the Chinese people would not otherwise tolerate the existence of the barbaric and blasphemous Communist Party. The CCP's sole means of maintaining its rule, as learned from the Soviet trial run, is the use of mass murder. One, the violent foundations of communist rule. Being the embodiment of an evil specter, communism's starting point could not be anything other than dishonorable. 
After Karl Marx proclaimed that, quote, a specter is haunting Europe, the specter of communism, bandits and ruffians established the Paris Commune, laying waste to the French capital and its unparalleled works of art and culture. In Russia and China, the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, CPSU, and the CCP seized power through despicable acts of conspiracy and bloodshed. A. The Rise of the Soviet Communists In February 1917, food shortages and deteriorating working conditions drove Russian industrial workers to go on strike. As the turmoil spread across the country, Tsar Nicholas II stepped down from the throne and the Russian provisional government was established. Learning of these events, Vladimir Lenin immediately returned to Russia from exile in Switzerland. At the time, World War I was raging. The countries between Russia and Switzerland were all hostile. In late 2007, the German magazine Der Spiegel revealed a 90-year-old secret. Kaiser Wilhelm II, who regarded Russia as a grave threat, realized that Lenin could bring disaster to Russia, so he allowed Lenin to travel through Germany to Sweden, then Finland, and eventually back to Russia. Wilhelm II also provided money and munitions to Lenin. By the end of 1917, Lenin had received 26 million marks from Germany. Winston Churchill had this to say about Germany's role in Lenin's return. They used the most lethal weapon in Russia. They shipped Lenin back in a tightly sealed truck, as if shipping a type of plague virus to Russia. Lenin carried out a coup on November 7, 1917, or October 25 by the traditional Julian calendar. With the October Revolution, Lenin overthrew the provisional government and established the world's first communist regime. But in the democratic election for the Russian Constituent Assembly, the Party of Socialist Revolutionaries, SRs, won a majority of national votes over Lenin's Bolshevik Party, which controlled the government administration. Out of an electorate of 44.4 million people, 40% voted for the SRs, with the Bolsheviks losing by a 20% margin. After this setback, in the Russian Constituent Assembly meeting on January 5, 1918, Lenin trampled on his promises and declared the Constituent Assembly an quote, enemy of the people. Having prepared in advance to enact martial law on the day of the Assembly's meeting in the Russian capital of Petrograd, the Bolsheviks mobilized troops and disbanded the Constituent Assembly by force, destroying the democratic process in Russia. The October Revolution and subsequent Leninist takeover was the origin of all violent communist movements throughout the world in the 20th century. It triggered the international rise of communism and the countless catastrophes that followed. B. The Chinese Communist Party Seizes Power after 1917, when the Soviet Union was just established, it exported revolution to China by making use of the fact that the Republic of China had joined the Third Communist International, or Comintern. The Bolsheviks dispatched Grigory Voitinsky to China to establish a local communist organization. Then it sent Mikhail Borodin to engineer an alliance between the Chinese Nationalist Party, Kuomintang, and the Soviet Union. Under this arrangement, the young Chinese Communist Party was given opportunities for rapid growth by subverting the Kuomintang. During World War II, in the eight years that the Kuomintang waged an all-out war against the invading Japanese army, the CCP used the conflict as cover while it expanded its forces. When the Japanese invaded China, the Red Army was on the verge of defeat, but at the time of China's victory, the communist forces boasted 1.32 million regular troops and a 2.6 million strong militia force. Following Japan's surrender, the CCP used the cover of peace talks with the Kuomintang to covertly expand its forces further. Meanwhile, the CCP's diplomatic efforts led the United States and the Soviet Union to abandon their policies that supported the nationalists. In 1949, the CCP finally defeated the Kuomintang government forces, founding the most evil totalitarian communist regime on earth. At this high point in the history of the world's communist movement, it controlled one-third of humanity and the world's land area, as it comprised Russia and China, 
the world's largest nations by size and population. Communist governments extended across large swaths of Europe and Asia, and many countries in Africa, South America, and Southeast Asia became clients or allies of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union or the Chinese Communist Party. Millions of people gave their lives on the battlefields of World War II, yet the unexpected result was the rapid expansion of totalitarian communism.